Hi all, welcome to Home Schooling with Hera. Hope everyone is well. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you all about conjunctions. What are conjunctions? When to teach them? How to teach them? So if you are ready to learn this, be with me to the end of the video. The first question is, what are conjunctions? So it's very simple. Conjunction are words that are used to connect other words, phrases, or clauses. You can even say that they are connectors. Okay, how they are connectors? Because they connect words, phrases, and clauses and help you to write longer sentences or advanced structures. So in today's video, we shall learn about the types of conjunctions and when you should introduce which one. So let's jump into it. The first type is coordinating conjunctions. This is the first type that we introduced to kiddos. Then the second type is subordinating conjunctions, then correlative conjunctions. Now, first of all, we will see that what are coordinating conjunctions and what are the uses of them. So the main purpose of coordinating conjunction is connection again. But what do they connect? They can connect like to like. What does it mean like to like? It means that coordinating conjunctions can connect noun to noun like apples and mangoes, adjectives to adjective like hot and cold, clauses to clauses. For this, you will just see the sentences in the next slide. Uh, they can also connect clauses. Now, if you don't know what are clauses, just write it in the comment box. I will surely make a video around this topic. But to help you understand coordinating conjunctions in this video, I will just give you a little insight about clauses as well. So let's move on to some example to understand the concept well. All right, so here are some examples. Sam is a lazy but smart boy. Lazy and smart, what are these two words? Are they two adjectives? Yes, they are. We are connecting two adjectives with a connector, with a conjunction that is but, okay? And this is the coordinating conjunction because this is connecting two like parts of a speech. Adjective to adjective. In the second example we have, he is good at cooking and baking. Now in this sentence, we are connecting cooking and baking. These both are the names of two activities. So they are nouns. Uh, if you don't know that how ing words can be nouns, write this as well in the comment box and I will make a video around this topic. They are gerunds, they are nouns. ing form of verbs can be used as nouns. So here they are nouns and we are connecting these two nouns with a coordinating conjunction that is and. In the last example, we have, if he wishes, he can work for the whole day or he'll do nothing. Now look at this sentence, he can work for the whole day. If I simply say this sentence, it's a complete sentence, he can work for the whole day. It's a clause, an independent clause. And let's talk about this part of sentence, he'll do nothing. I can simply use it anywhere. He'll do nothing. He is just useless. He'll do nothing. It's a complete sentence too. But in this sentence, we are joining. He can work for the whole day and he will do nothing. So the conjunction that is joining these two clauses is a coordinating conjunction and it is or. If he wishes, he can work for the whole day or he will do nothing. So this is how coordinating conjunction connect like to like. But there are a number of coordinating conjunctions and to memorize them, it could be a little tricky for kids. For that, we have a mnemonic device. It is called fan boys. If you go vertically down and fan boys, boys, fan boys. If you memorize this mnemonic device, you can figure out all the coordinating conjunction. The first one is for, F for for, a for and, N for nor, B for but, O for or, Y for yet, and S for so. Fanboys for and nor but or yet so. These are the coordinating conjunctions, but the most common of them are and, or, and. They are here. And, or, and. Now, but. when should we introduce this to children? 
if your kid is a first grader or he is six year old you can introduce coordinating conjunction to him and if you want to introduce the coordinating conjunction in a multi-sensory way that i would suggest you to do so the link to the video is in the description box for the multi-sensory way of introducing conjunction to kids do watch that video to give them the concrete concept of coordinating conjunction and how they work uh, let me just tell you that and is used to give more detail or is for choices or options and but shows the contradictions now let's check out the second type of conjunction the second type is subordinating conjunctions again they are used to connect uh, things but how and when do we use them subordinating conjunctions link subordinating clauses or dependent clauses to the main clauses or they are also called independent clauses if you don't know what are clauses dependent or independent clauses so don't worry i will try to make it clear in this video but for a complete uh, video on clauses just write it in the comment box that you want to watch that from me and i'll surely upload that video as well to understand this concept we need to see some examples and the examples are here uh, just say these sentences with me you'll miss the train you'll miss the train if you are saying this sentence does it have a complete sense or do you need some more information to have this sentence make sense you'll miss the train it's a simple sentence and if i say my phone rang my phone rang these two sentences that are in purple color are complete sentences they are giving a complete sense that my phone rang uh, it is a simple past sentence and this is a simple future you will miss the train but let's look at these two sentences if you don't hurry when i was at the gym do these two sentences giving you a complete sense if you don't hurry if you don't hurry then what what will happen the sentence is not complete you need to add some information to this to give it a complete sense uh, and if i say when i was at the gym okay when i was at the gym then what happened what are you talking about we need some more information uh, about this thing okay so the sentences or the group of words that do not give you the complete information or don't make a complete sense are called subordinating clauses or dependent clauses and the sentences or clauses that give you complete sense are called independent or main clauses so let's fix these things to make a proper sentence and see how the conjunctions are working here you can write this sentence in two ways if you don't hurry you'll miss the train if you don't hurry now look at this we have a conjunction at the beginning and this is a subordinating clause clause mean and uh, means a dependent clause you can even write this sentence like you'll miss the train if you don't hurry you'll miss the train if you don't hurry so again we have a conjunction that is joining these two things I remember that if you are using the conjunction at the beginning of the sentence you need to put a comma after the dependent clause but if you are starting your sentence with an independent clause you don't need to put a comma the conjunction is here to uh, make a connection or the rhythm of the sentence the second is when I was at the gym a comma my phone rang my phone rang when I was at the gym so again you can see that the word when is connecting these two clauses to make a complete sense okay let's move on to the mnemonic device i saw a web i saw a web or you can even use awobis but i personally don't like this this is so confusing okay so i saw a web is a better thing write it vertically down and then start opening the mnemonic device i for f s for since a for all the w for when a for as w for a while after because until before these are the most commonly used uh, subordinating conjunctions but we don't have only these few there are many subordinating conjunctions and they are here if you want you can take a screenshot of this and save it in your notes hope you have done it so let's move forward to the third type of conjunctions that are correlative conjunctions and 
when oh there is one more thing i'm sorry i just missed it when will you introduce um coordinating conjunction okay when you will introduce this subordinating conjunction uh you will give this to a fourth or fifth grader but before that you should have cleared the ideas of clauses and phrases if your children don't know if your students don't know what are clauses independent dependent what are phrases so it's of no use to go for uh, subordinating conjunctions because they are interlinked so the age group for this is fourth or fifth grader or the kids who are already familiar with clauses and phrases let's jump on to correlative conjunctions correlative conjunctions are used in pairs to link equivalent elements in a sentence now what does it mean to understand this is better to uh, look at the examples if i say I like not only mangoes but also apples as I just told you that they are used in pairs so you can see the purple color purple color is used for uh, conjunctions in jolly grammar and in Montessori uh, teaching as well so uh, conjunctions not only but also they are used in pairs and there must be equivalent element right after these conjunctions mangoes is a noun apples is also a noun i not only i like not only mangoes but also apples if you write this sentence in another way i not only like mangoes and apples that will be wrong okay you need to write mangoes and apples right after not only and but also second example is he will either fly tomorrow or go by car now we have either and right after either we have a verb okay he will fly tomorrow okay and then we have or and a verb go so he will either fly tomorrow or go by car again we are using two similar uh, equivalent elements with correlative conjunctions last example is is neither unfair nor illegal neither nor it's a pair and we are using unfair and illegal same type of elements right after them okay it's neither unfair nor illegal now when will you teach this type of conjunctions to your kids obviously when they are done with the first two types and it mostly happens uh, in the sixth grade okay this is the concept of sixth grade sixth grade here are some more examples of correlative conjunction either or neither nor not only but also as so not but you can also try to make some sentences using these conjunctions and write them down in the comment box. This is all from my side today. I hope you have liked the video. I hope you have got something useful from it. If yes, so please hit the like button, share the video with your friends and family. I'll see you soon with something new. Take care. Bye for now. And don't forget to make it a great day. Bye.